I'm Chris. <laughs> I'm Jack, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and if you'd believe it, this is the third time we're going at this. <laughs> well, the... Well, actually, both attempts were memes. <laughs> Especially the second one. We tried on the first one, and then it just fell apart immediately. <laughs> Dude, the first one probably has ten minutes of actual plot discussion. <laughs> <laughs> the rest is just racial epithets. <laughs> Ethnic epithets. Sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> Don't cancel me, Chris. I'm just ignorant. I can't cancel half the podcast. <laughs> how, will ever, how will you ever make it? <laughs> I can't wait till we do Windy Woo Homecoming Warrior. Um, but yeah. We got a lot of options. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Just missing our third partner. Where is she? <laughs> we watched a movie. Yes. I think. <laughs> yes. This, we did watch a movie. Uh, we watched Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. Because it is the best Scooby-Doo movie. And it was a funny joke that we had. Exactly. And then we just followed through with it and we watched it. Oh, exactly. It was a complete joke. But, you know, it's miles beyond that live action movie. That movie is terrible. The movie's so bad. <laughs> I hate that movie. <laughs> Dude, come on. It's Scooby-Doo, but like American Pie also. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> why Why do you have to do that? Because, <laughs> Jack, you know, you gotta, you gotta have these inside jokes for the parents. Like, no, I'm not gonna get into these jokes. No, we're gonna hop into this movie. So this movie... Um, yeah, we can just do Scooby-Doo another time. We had the same we, problem the first time we, we tried this. <laughs> we will not make any more references to Scooby-Doo. We'll do that at some point. Um, but yeah, in this movie, uh, it starts off with the gang solving a normal mystery, like whatever. They unmask a guy, he's a guy in a costume, and then they all go their separate ways. Uh, Daphne and Fred are... That's all- kind of like the beginning of, uh, Scooby-Doo 2002. This movie copies, uh, Scooby-Doo 2002 copies this movie so many times. A lot. And we're gonna have a counter, that's one. <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna reference this movie again. We did it. <laughs> again. <laughs> Took about 30 seconds. <laughs> but we're moving on. <laughs> so, uh, Fred and Daphne are running some show with Daphne as the host. And they're about to start a new show where they go around looking for real ghosts and monsters. And Velma, because she's a nerd, runs a bookstore. And Shaggy and Scooby uh, are TSA. Um, something, something, something. 9-11 would have been worse if they were working. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hey, that's my joke. <laughs> Wait, I don't want to claim that joke. <laughs> yeah, Scooby-Doo is the best at sniffing out all this food that people are trying to bring into the country. <laughs> they find, because Shaggy and Scooby are TSA, they find all the food and they eat all of it and they get fired, obviously. But luckily, Fred hits all of them up to um, invite them along to record this new show. They look for real ghosts with uh, Daphne. Yeah, Daphne apparently misses all of them, which is kind of... It's like, why did they break up in the first place? Yeah, they don't explain it. It's not like... like it, it's, it's almost like they got bored of like solving these mysteries because like, it was too not supernatural or something. <laughs> I, I know, like, they never, like... Ate, specifically say why they break up but yeah maybe that's why because like you know daphne throughout this movie is like she is looking she needs there to be a real monster or ghost like and they all just split up to do things like you know i could understand freddie and daphne going to like start a tv show that sounds pretty dope the other they sort of uh she worked at a bookstore in the other uh that's tsa which i'm not saying is a bad job I'm just saying, if I guess the other job... Velma deserved better. She does. Whoa. Shaggy and Scooby deserved worse. <laughs> <laughs> Those idiots. Well, at least they get fired, which makes sense. Thank God. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, uh, Fred and Daphne take them on an adventure as they're going around to different places in the country looking for real ghosts. And like the TV show, they always find um, that... The person's um, a guy in a costume. And Daphne is real pissed off about this. She's so frustrated that there's not any real monsters. Man, why isn't there anything supernatural going on anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> but their, their travels finally bring them to Louisiana, you know, down south. And as they're going... Where all the supernatural things happen. Hey, you know, dude, don't go south of Kentucky. 
Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> if you are a listener south of Kentucky, I apologize. Um, but you aren't though, except for that guy in Australia. Besides that guy from Australia, who are you? Um, but or lady, or lady, or non-binary. I do well, not know. <laughs> that's true. Don't cancel us. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they had Louisiana, and as uh, Daphne's talking about being so frustrated about not finding any real ghosts, a woman named Lena overhears and says that she works at like on an island that actually is haunted, and that they should all come with her to this island. And Fred is smitten with her, and Daphne's pissed, and uh, Velma's excited, and then she mentions food, and Shaggy and Scooby are in. <laughs> so, <laughs> why does Scooby always steal Shaggy's food? They, they they cut the sandwich in half, and Scooby Doo eats like ninety five percent of it. He only Jack- leaves the bread for Shaggy. It's called a power move. <laughs> <laughs> He's establishing his dominance. See, as a beta, I don't understand. <laughs> Locally, I'm what you're called a bottom. Or... <laughs> Jack, as an incel, I understand the, how the dichotomy of alpha. All right, we're starting to fall apart again. <laughs> we made it a lot farther this time. <laughs> we did. We've covered far more ground. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so they head off to Zombie Island, um... But it's called, like, Moonscar Island or something. Um, Named yeah. after a pirate. Named after Morgan Moonscar, a pirate from the 1700s. If I see lassies. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be a good pirate, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in the southern coast of Africa, maybe. I don't know if I could pull Caribbean. <laughs> Where are we going, Somalia? <laughs> I'm the captain now. Okay, all right. We're off the topic. Wrong movie. <laughs> no, we're falling apart again. <laughs> so they head off, and they come to this boat that's going to take the... Because uh, they're in the mystery van over to the island. Because you don't have a Scooby-Doo movie without the mystery van. It's the, you know, six team member. True. Yeah. And we meet uh, Jacques, the ferryman, who has this all over their Creole accent of like, ho, 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 you're taking them to the island? Oh, ho, ho, ho. I hate his accent. <laughs> Worst character by far. Oh, Lena, you're bringing them to the island. Like, it's like, it's like, like, it's like he's Jamaican, and then it's like he's like, like Colombian, and it's like he's French, and it's like. Then he's just Southern, and it's like, stop, please stop exactly. talking. Exactly, it's like. Whoever's voice in this person is not whatever they're trying to project. Like, you are going everywhere. <laughs> and then we also meet a fisherman who's looking to catch a, a catfish. Random side plot. I'm literally just learning this now, but that character name is Snakebite Scruggs. <laughs> and I've, I, I've not gotten to the good part yet, actually. Right. He's voiced by Mark Hamill. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? I didn't. <laughs> That's actually hilarious. <laughs> Snake bite Scruggs. Snake bite Scruggs. He deserves his own spinoff. <laughs> Him trying to catch that catfish. I ought to watch this 15 minute short film. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. I would have watched a three hour feature length film <laughs> about Snake bite Scruggs See? and his hatred of tourists. <laughs> See, at the end, he would have realized that the real, you know, prize was the friends that we met along the way. Mojo. <laughs> his pig. His giant hunting pig. His giant boar. <laughs> they never call him a boar. They just call him a pig? Yeah, he's just a pig. Oh. He's his hunting pig or he something. He has horns. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Or tusk or whatever. Um, whatever. <laughs> whatever. But yeah, so he's he's there. He's in the mix. So they get to the island. <laughs> As they're walking up, we meet Bo, a gardener who, you know, is very frustrated. Well, to be fair, the first thing that happens is Scooby-Doo gets out of the van and he starts chasing all the rats. (laughs) He keeps calling all these cats rats. Rats. Rats, Shaggy. Dumb dog. (laughs) I kind of like that when uh, he's running after them and they're like taunting him because he's a dumb dog. (laughs) He keeps getting stuck in different places. They're like, we can't talk, but you're stupid. (laughs) You idiot. Have you ever considered not smoking so much weed? (laughs) Oh, 
uh, so he's ruining Bo's, like, flowers and stuff and all of his plants, so he gets pissed off. And then immediately, Velma's like, hmm, hmm, another suspect, because Velma's ticking these suspects one at a time, like, ferryman, fisherman, gardener, you know, Velma just doesn't like the lower class, so. <laughs> <laughs> she hates blue collar. <laughs> Oh, God, but then we meet uh, the owner of the house, Simone, who, uh, you know, introduces herself or whatever and starts talking about the house and its history. And as they're in the kitchen of the house, uh, words start to appear on the wall that says, uh, beware. We had the same problem last time. It says, get out. <laughs> it says, get out, God. For love of God. <laughs> Good movie. Have you ever seen it, Chris? <laughs> I watched it. <laughs> I also watched it. It's good. It's a great movie. Um, honestly, for like a direct-to-video movie from the late 90s about Scooby-Doo, it's a solid movie. Oh, I was talking about Get Out. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, my God. Old jokes. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so as this writing's appearing, Daphne's freaking out because she's like, oh, my goodness, it's actually a ghost. And Fred's like, I don't know. It's always a trick or something. And, like, Velma's also a little skeptical. But then Until she starts floating. She starts floating in the air, and Daphne's even more excited. She's like, oh, my God. Levitation. This is awesome. This is awesome. And Someone help her. <laughs> yeah, Velma's like, can someone help me get down, please? Like, <laughs> Everyone hates Velma. <laughs> they treat Velma so poorly. That's why it's really she, a shame. She, she gets ditched every time they decide to split up. Um, I always send her by herself. <laughs> go die, Velma. <laughs> yeah, Velma, I'd rather go hang out with my dog. <laughs> I'd rather hang out with Linda Cardellini. <laughs> <laughs> Who wouldn't? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta stop that. All right. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, so, and then after that, um... They just head out to the woods. I'm assuming it was because of the cats. And as they're out there, they fall into a gigantic hole. They probably went out there to smoke. <laughs> <laughs> if this was Scooby Doo 2002, yeah. Um, but yeah, they head out. Nice. Th <laughs> they head out there to this uh, the woods. They fall into this giant hole. And then as they're in this hole, uh, they're trying to climb out, and a skeleton arm pops out of the like dirt. A bunch of green whatever stuff comes out of the sky. Magic. Green magic. We'll call it that. Green <laughs> magic. <laughs> green mile. Green magic comes out of green the Green mile. Sky. Good movie. <laughs> it also has restorative effect. But <laughs> green, <laughs> green magic comes out of the sky and animates this corpse. And it turns out to be this like zombie with a scar on his face. It's it's the, it's the, the, the zombie of Morgan Moon Scar. Um... See, his scar looks like a moon. It's a crescent moon on his face. And... <sighs> <laughs> and this brings us back to, like, earlier in the movie, behind the writing on the wall, pieces of the house, you see, like, the name of the boat that Morgan Moonscar sailed on. It was, like, built into the house. Pieces of that boat were built in the house somehow. That makes sense. Yeah. The house is fucking old. Somehow it's 200 years old. Um, and made from the same wood from 200 years ago. Don't need to talk about that. Uh, but yeah. Very and, sturdy. Exactly. But the zombies coming at them, they freak the fuck out, and they run out of the hole. They run into Bo, who's again pissed at them because they ran into him. And the gang finds Bo's them. so mad. Bo's... And I can't blame him. <laughs> they keep ruining his plants, Jack. <laughs> his pots. His pots, Jack. You ever just understand the connection between a man and his plants? <laughs> I'm a little confused. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and all the gang joins in to figure out why they're freaking out because they heard them yelling from the house. So they all come out and they're like, we saw a zombie. And immediately Velma's like, hmm, they saw a zombie and then it's gone. And then you appear, Bo? Very suspicious. That's big sus, bro. <laughs> so suspicious, Bo. <laughs> but they like digress. They all head back to the house. And they're getting ready for dinner. They're getting into their rooms and stuff and everything. Uh, you know. <laughs> Shaggy and Scooby head off to their room or whatever. And as they're looking in the mirror to get ready. Uh, do you want to say anything about Shaggy? Or? No, yeah. I love the fact that his... Uh, all of his clothes are exactly the same. 
<laughs> Which is, you know, the theory about cartoon characters, and they just own only the same clothes. <laughs> Dude, exactly. Well, it's, like, also, like, it's, like, a thing in this movie, and then, like, all the subsequent shows and shit, is that, like, they always update, um, for some reason, like, Freddy and Daphne's clothes, but they never really update the other two, like, Velma and, like, Shaggy. No, they like, always look the same. They look completely the same. But, uh, yeah, and while Shaggy and Scooby are looking in the mirror and, like, Shaggy's, like, trying to figure out what clothes to use, the ghost of a Confederate soldier appears in the mirror and is, like, <coughs> Leave! <laughs> and they freak the hell out, run outside, fall. And they get out. Good movie. Yeah. <laughs> God. Damn it. They run out, and they, like, smash into Fred, and they smash into Simone, and Simone's like, get this dog off of me. And again, Scooby's like, dog? What? Dog? <laughs> Do you not know you're a dog, Scooby-Doo? He doesn't. He can. Sp- he has the ability to speak, you know? It's how Jar Jar Binks doesn't know he's a lower life. <laughs> hey. Hey. They're not lower life forms. The Gungans and the Naboo cannot <laughs> not live together. I don't know. I don't remember the line. There's a clear line between the Gungans and the Naboo, but that is not this movie. Um, so... Bad movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Will be featured at some point. Um, not nearly as good as Get Out. <laughs> You get, like, sponsored by Get Out, a movie from, like, five years ago without telling me. <laughs> Little did you know, I've been in all of Jordan Peele's movies. <laughs> oh my god, you're the white guy. <laughs> I was the white guy in that movie. <laughs> Dude, we're so much farther ahead. <laughs> we are killing it this time. <laughs> Alright, so, yeah, so, they go back to check it out, and Velma realizes that the mirror used to belong to, like, a confederate general. And Simone, again, doing exposition, she's like, oh yeah... Uh, Confederate soldiers were stationed on the island back during the Civil War, so there's stuff probably belonging to them all around. So. Kind of a weird twist. <laughs> the weird twist is they straight up say Confederate, not like, no, now it'd be like Civil War soldiers or something like that, you know? <laughs> there are a lot of these Confederate soldiers on the bayou. <laughs> what? It will lead to... My 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 favorite uh, realization, but we'll we'll, we'll get there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so they're about to eat dinner or whatever, and like Simone's like, uh, the dog needs to get the hell out. Like I'm not eating with this dog. The dog's scaring my cat. The dog jumped on me. Get it out of here. And again, also, you know, why would you let a dog eat at a dinner table? Exactly. He's sitting. At, he puts an. He puts He's a, a dog. Get around his like throat and is like ready to eat. And she again. He's like dog. Where? And it's like. You, Scooby, you're a dog. You, you're you literally a dog. You are a dog. You we, You dog. <laughs> you dog. But Shaggy, diffusing the situation, is like, we're good. We'll head out and eat in the van. We'll eat a bunch of crawfish together. Just me and my dog. All right. Um. But yeah, so they're eating their crawfish in the van, and like the cats start messing with them. And they start freaking out or whatever. And then it leads into Shaggy driving the van off into the forest or whatever. Where they run back into the fisherman and his pig Mojo, and they mess up their. They just about had the the uh that catfish. That catfish. That catfish. Just right there. Yeah, and he's like, "You damn tourists!" You know, snake or snake bite. Snake bite <laughs> scrugs. I'm so glad you did that name. Snake bite scrugs. I can't believe it's Luke Skywalker. <laughs> Dude, he's in another movie in the '90s that we will do that you will not believe. That'll be for cult movie fans. Um, <laughs> oh, God. If only you guys could see the look in my eyes right now. It's a bit murderous. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Um, so, and they're like, they get away from them or whatever. And they fall into the water or whatever. And again, green magic comes out of the sky. This haunting green magic. The whole, like, scene changes. And it starts animating these skeletons from like the lake and they all come up and what rises the most terrifying things you know zombie pirates zombie confederates zombie tourists <laughs> <laughs> and hawaiian shirts and hawaiian shirts with cameras around their neck and sun hats terrifying <laughs> the most terrifying things you could ever imagine and, they and start- then it becomes basically the the thriller music video <laughs> dude exactly 
a very slapping song comes on as they're getting chased by these zombies. I love that song. The song is pretty good, like... It's too good for this. <laughs> Dude, this movie is too good for what it is. <laughs> this is a direct-to-video movie about Scooby-Doo that came out in the late 90s. The show hadn't been on for, like, over a decade, like... My God. <laughs> this literally... It, this movie this movie is like the blade of the Marvel Cinematic Universe for Scooby-Doo. It is. Like, this movie didn't happen, dude. You All think Blade's that good? I think Blade started that Marvel shit, dude. Like, Blade led to X-Men, Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Uh, Iron, Iron Man, Man, and this Marvel Cinematic Universe. Right. If, if Blade didn't succeed, none of that would have happened. Like, Blade's if, okay. Blade is okay. I agree with that completely. <laughs> no, the second Blade's far better than the first one. The first Blade is okay. But because it did so successful financially, everyone was like, holy crap, let's start buying these comic book movies. So that's what led to all that stuff. But this does not pertain to Scooby. It also gave us Fantastic Four. Terrible movie. So yeah, so as uh, Scooby and Shaggy are getting chased or whatever, we pan back to uh, the gang, Velma, Daphne, and Fred, who all notice that. Who are also enjoying their gumbo. <laughs> They're loving their... Fred is loving that gumbo. He's like, mmm, this gumbo is so good. He's Lena, this is the best gumbo I've ever had. <laughs> These biscuits are just the, the the greatest. Like They all ignore him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like Daphne's being super jealous, and like he's super jealous when she talks about how attractive Bo is or whatever. And I mean, like, for God's sake, his name is Bo. <laughs> dude, they couldn't have written... They sp- uh, in, even in the credits, it's B-E-A-U, Bo. <laughs> dude. <laughs> Which means handsome in French. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Dude, they literally made, like, you know, a single suburban wife, not a single suburban wife, a suburban wife's fantasy. Like, he's the handsome gardener. He's the handyman. He is the, he's the pool boy. He's the main character of a book you'll find in the CVS, in that aisle you shouldn't go to. <laughs> <laughs> the book aisle in the CVS? <laughs> How did I get here? <laughs> It's just all romantic books for single women or uh, married women. Um, nice. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so they're heading out to go look for them because the band's gone. And the guys are gone. And they hear yelling. So they're going to go look for them. And uh, they run into Bo, who's also going to tag along. And as they're walking, Freddy has a brilliant idea, as always, to be like, let's split up. So, because, you know... Damn it, Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> the, the dumbest ideas it hit. Is Scooby Doo the one who started that, or has that been older than Scooby Doo? Of like, let's split up, gang. Like I have no idea. That's actually that's a good question, right? Because like Scooby Doo's been around since the sixties. Let's split up. We're in a scary movie. <laughs> Fred's like, oh yeah, you know, let's split up, and Daphne's like, all right, sure, I'll go with Bo. And he's like, no, <laughs> and like Velma's like, I'll go with Bo, and he's like, oh, okay, <laughs> I guess, I guess. So, like, Bo and Velma go off, and Daphne and Fred go off, and I actually really like Bo and, like, uh, Velma going off, because the entire time, Velma is still, like, I'm so suspicious of you, and, like... It makes that scene hilarious, where he's picking this rock above his head, and he's about to throw it, dude, and she's right in front of him, and he tosses it in front of her, and he's like, quicksand. <laughs> exactly! But, like, they do, they animate that scene, it, it actually looks pretty terrifying, because you see, like... Him oh yeah! Grab her arm. She's like, "Let go of me!" And she pulls away. And you see him just go and grab like a huge rock and lift it over. And they like animate her face like in <gasps> terror. And he just tucks it over her head. It's like quicksand. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it the whole time. Yeah. It's like, huh? And then she's like, "I'm still suspicious of you." And it's like, huh. I would be too. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. But yeah. So and then like Daphne and Fred are heading off. And then, like, they find the van, and they find, like, the guys on around. And as they're looking around, a hand comes out of the bush and grabs Daphne. And she immediately judo tosses him over her shoulder and onto judo the ground. Judo <laughs> Again, this, is, this, this was stolen by the new Scooby-Doo movie. It's Scooby-Doo 2002. Um, and then, uh... Scream had a similar thing as well. <laughs> we can't get away. <laughs> we can't. We, but we're limiting ourselves this time. All right. But, yeah, and so they... Toss the zombie over, the zombie pirate. And they're, like, recording or whatever. Because Fred's been recording this whole time. Um, and then Daphne's like, 
Now we're gonna see who this really is. And he tried to This is the them. worst mask I've ever seen. <laughs> they're trying to pull the zombie's mask off and they can't get it off. And Fred goes over like, he's not trying hard enough. And he goes and tries to pull his off, rips off the zombie's head. And then it's still like talking or <laughs> they, like they they play like hot potato with it. They're, they're like just passing it to each like, other. Oh my god, it's like and then like how this got a G rating, I don't know. <laughs> I don't understand actually how this was shown on Cartoon Network all the time when we were kids. Like this movie's actually very this movie's this movie's more spooky than The Shining. Like the imagery It's not more spooky. It's definitely scarier. Scarier. Gotcha. It dude, like because, like, at this time, too, Daphne and, like, Bo show back up, and they're po- tossing the, like, sc- the head around each other and everything. And then, like, Fred is still, like, maybe it's animatronic. Like, he is not accepting that this is real at all. Like, it can't be real. I mean, from their experience, yeah, probably not. <laughs> no, no, exactly. Like, it's always not re- I mean, if we went on a, a damn, like, mystery, whatever, uh, and, like, like, someone was in a... A zombie, I'd be like, yeah, it's a guy in a goddamn costume. Like, zombies aren't real. Exactly. <laughs> like, I can understand his disbelief. Like, it was like, I'm an open minded person, but if anyone ever comes up to me and is like, oh yeah, ghosts, aliens, or zombies, or whatever is real, I'd be like, you're dumb. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, little did you know, Chris, I believe in all those things. <laughs> Little did you know, my opinion stays the same. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't change at all. <laughs> so yeah, so they're freaking out. They toss the heads, the zombie around, and they start running. So they go back to the house, and at the house, all the power's out, mm-hmm. and they're trying to turn on switches, whatever. And they go by the stairs, and there's the secret entrance. You know, classic. Yes, we do. It's from the stairs, and just opens down into like an entrance or whatever under but yeah so they go down into like this weird corridor that leads to this tunnel under the house they find or i guess scooby and shaggy get there first actually to the house no not to the house but they get to this underground layer first no where they find the voodoo dolls and they pick them up and like oh yeah they do yeah As... when when the rest of the gang is on the way back uh to the house yeah shaggy and scooby fall into like a and hole. then they disappear they just vanish. They fall into the uh, hole underground into his cave, and they start messing with these voodoo dolls of the of Fred, Daphne, and um, Velma, and they they just start like playing. these dolls look just like our friends. They're just playing with them, and they're causing them to like float and hit each other and stuff and everything. Like Bo's trying to get them down, and so not the shit voodoo stands. man from Scooby Doo oh two thousand two. <laughs> is this number three? How many times is this movie gonna steal? I think I think we're at like five or something. <laughs> This movie is so similar. They mess around with those dolls, and they stop messing around with them and head out of there. Again, freaking out, trying to get off the island, just being scaredy cats. And then the gang... For good to- reason. Yeah. This time. No, exactly. As the gang's in that tunnel, they find Lena, who says that, you know, uh, the power went out and those zombies came. And, and then- they dragged Simone away. Exactly. They dragged her away down this this tunnel, and... Velma, being Velma, is suspicious. And they, like, follow Lena down to, you know, this uh, cave or whatever, where there's, like, this giant, like, um, moon or, like, sky hole or whatever that shows the moonlight. And then... I like that. Sky hole. <laughs> <laughs> What's the word? Uh, sky... I can't think of it. Sky... I don't know what you're going for. It's like, you know, when you have, like, a... So, no, I can't think of it. Never mind. Like a sundial, but a moon dial? It is a moon dial, but I can't think of the name for whatever this is. It's just a hole. It's, it's a hole. It's <laughs> underground, and there's a hole that <laughs> comes in. I'm not... I agree. Uh, <laughs> Sky hole is just a <laughs> hilarious way to say it. <laughs> okay. Um. Jesus. Uh, okay. So, you know that's not the sky, right, Chris? They're underground. <laughs> Quiet, you. <laughs> sorry, sir. <laughs> I'm so sorry, massa. <laughs> Told you that. <laughs> That's my joke. Haha, uh-huh, look at that. A white man appropriating a black man's culture. <laughs> <laughs> wait, Unheard of. Wait till we do roots. <laughs> Please don't make me do roots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, God. Okay. All right. So, um, Jesus. So, yeah. So, they get to this huge cavern or whatever. It's the sun dot, uh, this moon dot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, we're starting again. <laughs> <laughs> Cat moon dial, goodness. Um, and then Velma decides now to be like, no, uh, Lena, that's not what happened. There are no drag marks, so Simone did not get dragged here. You're lying. And then like Simone, you're trying to entrap us here. It worked. You should have said something sooner. Or like no, exactly. Like, she followed her all the way here, and then it's like, why would you say something now? Like exactly. Like you should have said something before. Why, like, you... oh God, Velma's the worst character. <laughs> she is the smartest character at the same time makes the same dumb mistakes, which don't make sense, where it's like, you notice that she's being suspicious, there aren't any drag marks on the ground, but you follow her. <laughs> but yeah, she follows them, and then, you know, Simone's like, ah, nice, she comes out of nowhere, you know, doing the slow <laughs> she, clap. She came, she came up and said, ah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, Good nice. one, Lena. You got him here. <laughs> She's like, ah, nice in her French accent. Just imagine it. Um, <laughs> and then nice. <laughs> Very nice. And That's French, right? <laughs> they all sound the same to me. <laughs> now we're going back to that, that European hacker. Um, but, uh, yeah, so then Simone comes on. They start explaining what's going on and how Simone and Lena are, like, 200 years old. And that they are original settlers of this island. They look pretty good for 200 years old. They do. Um, and <laughs> originally... And being cartoon characters. <laughs> and being cartoon characters. Very well drawn. Nice. Yes. Um, and <laughs> they, 200 years ago, while they were settling this island, Morgan Moonscar and his pirates came and attacked the island... And this was actually pretty chilling. This is fucked up, actually. Like, they attack, they just, like, this during, like, a harvest ceremony. They knock over all the food. To their cat gods, that part's weird. Yes, they, yeah, they're a bunch of, they're a bunch of, most likely, based on the we, color we of these were... people, Europeans, like, <laughs> <laughs> settlers who worship a cat god. And they were, like, sacrificing something for harvest? <laughs> Maybe they were just a cult of pagans that escaped, you know, persecution in Europe. Freaks. <laughs> but yeah, so they, you know, they're celebrating their cat guard, cat god during the harvest. <laughs> cat god. Cat god. Cat dog. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, Chris, I've seen a cat be a god before. Have you ever seen Dragon Ball Super? <laughs> <laughs> I do know of Lord Beerus, but okay. So <laughs> The true lord. <laughs> True Alpha and Omega. God of destruction. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> God. Okay. But yeah, so apparently, um, Morgan Moon's Garden is guys. They attack during the Harvest Festival, and they literally run all the sellers besides Lena and Simone into the bayou, <laughs> where then alligators swim into the water, and we are to infer, based on the looks of horror on Simone and Lena's face, that they are eaten by alligators. I think they're crocodiles, actually. Okay, crocodiles. <laughs> I don't... I assumed out. Why do you think they're crocodiles? Oh, wait, no, I'm dead wrong. They're alligators. <laughs> I always forget what the distinction is. Alligators are in the United States. Crocodiles are in northern Africa. Yes. Damn it. <laughs> dead wrong again. <laughs> hey, man, you're the one who wanted to start a podcast with this idiot. <laughs> You are no idiot, based on the Shining episode. Definitely not. This, <laughs> Chris, you know I don't know that much about Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, have you ever seen Get Out? <laughs> God. God. That should not be the recurrent joke. Okay, goodness. It's turning into my favorite joke. <laughs> the fact that I'm going to have to cut out multiple segments from this bit as we're describing what's happening in the cave that they're telling a story. Right, the climax of the story. <laughs> They keep getting away from. Chris, uh, we have done so well so far. <laughs> and we're, <laughs> we're almost done with the movie compared to where we were last time. <laughs> I think last time at this point, where were we? We were like just getting on the island. <laughs> <laughs> okay, alright. Just defending as many people as we could. <laughs> <laughs> that episode will never see the light of day unless you subscribe to our Patreon. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Alright, so, um, oh goodness. So, yeah, so, then Lena and Simone 
you know, they're like, they go into their cave where the sundial is, and they... Pray. Moon dial. Sorry, moon dial. I'm going to probably say sundial again. Uh, and they pray to their cat god to, like, curse them or whatever, and their cat god curses them to become cat monsters and has them attack uh, Morgan Moonscar and his pirates. And um, Sucks for them. I mean, they did feed all these people to alligators. So in those days, it's like, you know, throughout the movie, you know, Morgan Moonscar's spear is trying to, like, warn these people, but at the same time, it's like, he fed those people to alligators. He sure did. Just to hide his gold on the island? Where is this gold? Right, that's a, that's a tangent that's never touched again. Because that's, you know, that's what Velma throughout the movie is assuming, like, someone's after Morgan Moonscar's gold, just like usual, which I like as a subversion, because it's like, no one gives a damn about the gold. It's not. It doesn't a, matter at all. They never matter. find it. They're not even looking for it. No, exactly. Because you're assuming like the whole throughout the movie, it's like maybe like Bo or something's digging for whatever. That's not what it is. It's much darker what he's digging for. Um, but so he's digging to put flowers in the ground. Yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> so they learn that these two are like cat monsters, and they immediately transform into like cat monsters. Nice, and, nicely yes. put. <laughs> The cat monsters are <laughs> turned into cat monsters. Exactly. And Shaggy and Scooby, being complete cowards, have finally ran all over the island to the deck where they run back into Jacques to escape the island without their friends. Um, and Jacques t- also turned into a cat monster. And apparently along the way at some point, they gave him immortality because these cat monsters are immortal uh, in order for him to bring tourists to the island for some reason. That's well, he he just wanted to be immortal. But but they needed a fairy man, right? Mm-hmm. That's what they said. They needed a fairy man, which is one of the things where it's like, I so guess it's perfect for him. But does all he do is ferry people from that island and back, or does he do other things? Like he probably has some hobbies. Probably does. I mean, the Harvest Moon only comes. I don't know how often the Harvest Moon is. I actually don't know either. Right? Because they only like the... once a year kind of thing, or like I know a full moon's once a month. I don't know if the Harvest Moon is different, and it's like once a year or once every few. Years. I don't know how often the Harvest. They don't explain that. Uh, this movie doesn't make any sense. They might just be normal people whenever the Harvest Moon isn't near. Quite like the Snake People in that one movie. Which movie is that, Chris? I will not say its name. The movie that shall not be named. <laughs> <laughs> the Voldemort of movies. <laughs> Shout out Joe Gula. <laughs> Shout out Joe Gula. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so they get chased by this giant cat monster who grabs them and is probably about to murder them. When but I- luckily, the hero confederate zombies <laughs> <laughs> save the day. <laughs> the heroic confederate z- <laughs> zomb- Oh, God. I, I'm, I should not say that. Uh, these confederate zombies uh, save uh, the, the Shaggy and Scooby and allow them to escape. While Lena and um, Simone are using the voodoo dolls, even though they're ferocious cat monsters, to suppress the gang against walls, which is... And they tie them up. Yeah, they tie them up, and then they're going to start draining the life out of them in order to stay alive. And luckily, Shaggy and Scooby fall into the cave, cause a huge commotion. I like like this part where they explain that they didn't make dolls of... Either of them, <laughs> because they're like these two are fucking dumb as hell. They're like idiots. Why they're would no... why would we waste this magic wax <laughs> on them? Like it's the perfect camouflage idiocy. It's, <laughs> it's how Shaggy and Scooby prevail every time. Everyone underestimates them. Idiocracy. Okay, movie. Idiocracy. Yeah. It's damn it. That's actually the biggest thing in both those live action Scooby Doo movies is underestimating Shaggy and Scooby. Every time, okay, but whatever. <laughs> but they come into the cave or whatever, and they're getting chased by the cat monsters, so Velma is able to, like, wriggle her dolls, like, because they tie a string around the dolls to, like, hold them down. She, she's able to get that off of them, and then she releases all the other dolls. And then they take... Velma, once again, being the best character. Velma, again, being the most competent character, whenever she's not. Um... She, they take stuff from Simone and Lena and put it onto the dolls and then use those dolls to, like, throw them back and suppress them or whatever. And the zombies are slowly entering the cave and interfering, you know, saving the gang and stuff. But they're also 
sort of just bags of bones getting tossed around and ripped apart. And luckily, the, the, the greatest savior of the gang is time, because the Harvest Moon is past. <laughs> oh, thank God. And a terrifying scene occurs in which Simone, Lena, and Jacques wilt into skeletons and turn to dust. It's literally, like, straight out of uh, Indiana Jones. Like. Yes. It is like they opened up the, 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 the Ark of the Covenant and, like... They look turned, inside and they're... <gasps> turn to dust. Like, it's... Cat monsters, Nazis, what's the difference? <laughs> and there's a feline frau line joke there somewhere, but I'm not going to make it. I can't make it. <laughs> I'm not smart enough. <laughs> so yeah, the gangs prevailed against these cat monsters based on a lot of luck. Um, as always. As always. And they uh, come to the realization that Bo is actually an undercover detective who's been there looking for evidence of the disappearances, so all those holes is him looking for bodies. Yeah, they're like, they're like, oh, no one's ever gonna believe this story, and he's like, oh no, they'll believe you, I'm a cop! <laughs> yeah, it's just like, I'm a cop, I'm a detective, I've been here running a sting, and it's like, and again, it's a very dark thing, where it's like, he's been looking for bodies, over this Yeah, time. he's been digging holes in the ground to look for bodies. Like, this is a kid's movie. <laughs> Allegedly. Uh, they would never show something this good on MTV. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that this is a better movie at being mature and it's specifically targeted at children than that live-action Scooby-Doo movie is so sad for that live-action Scooby-Doo movie. Uh, I okay. hate that movie. Alright, now we're doing Scooby-Doo 2002. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, we're transitioning right into it. Let's... <laughs> but yeah, so the game prevails. They figure that out. Velma and Bo uh, flirt or for a second or whatever, where Bo's like, oh, I want to... Fred and Daphne flirt a little bit, too. They do, too, because they weren't together before this movie for some reason, but now they're flirting a lot more, but m maybe together? Who knows? They get off the island The somewhere. greatest will-they-won't-they they story of all time. <sighs> uh... <laughs> but they somehow... They... Still better than Friends. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> They have somehow, because it's the morning now, so they've somehow, after these events, decided to stay on the island for the rest of the night, and then the next morning, take Jacques' boat back to the main <coughs> mainland. Oh my lord. <laughs> so yeah, and as they're going back, they run into the fisherman and Mojo, who finally have caught the fish, and Scooby ruins it. Rats! Rats! Raggy! Damn him. Damn that dog. My least favorite character. God, but that is the end of Scooby-Doo Zombie Island. Oh, goodness. Decent movie. Honestly, like, I would recommend it. It is, it's a movie that I came back to, like, probably over, like, a year or so ago, just because, like, I think it's the one that popped up on Netflix, and I was like, let's see if this still holds up, and it held up. Like, It's still pretty good. Exactly. I've not watched this movie in, like, I don't know, over ten years, at least. Mm -hmm. It's still pretty good. Exactly, like, it was still, it's, it is... Spooky. By far the best Scooby-Doo movie. No, definitely. It is spooky, it is creepy, it is, but at the same time, it's still a lot of fun, like, you like, love these characters, and, like, a lot of this shit, like, makes sense, and it's like... They subvert your expectation, where the horror in this movie is actually real, <laughs> like, the real. finale is real. <laughs> exactly, like, these, the zombies in these movies, you... Like, if you don't watch this movie, look up pictures, are actually pretty terrifying. Like, for, like, a kid, I, 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 it's one of those things where, like, watching this as a kid, I'm like, how did, like, I watch these zombies? Like, and, like, the reveal of these giant, these terrifying cat monsters, and the chilling thing where, like, they've been feeding off and murdering tourists for centuries, and, like, oh, God, it's, it's a very, like... Sounds like a certain 80s British movie I've seen. <laughs> Anthropomorphic hum uh, animal monsters sacrificing people. Uh, hmm. It snake shall not god. be named. Snake god. Cat god. It's... Cat dog. <laughs> Cat dog. Terrible show. <laughs> Horrendously bad show. <laughs> Alone in the world, a little cat dog. Oh, goodness. But, yeah, I... I know, I would like, you know, if you want, like, you know, a good little spooky movie that's quick 
enjoyable and fun, I definitely recommend Scooby Zombie Island. So would I. If you like Scooby Doo at all, like this is the quintessential Scooby Doo movie. Yes, exactly. This is far better than those live action movies. And out of all those like direct to D V D movies which aren't that terrible until like after like two thousand three, I'd go with this movie. This movie literally restarted like Scooby Doo. Love this movie. It's a solid movie. It's it's you know, I you know, if I ever had like a, a, a pantheon of like amazing direct to D V D movies, this would be on it. This like, would be the top. Yes, like for having like no momentum, like like the show's been off for ten years. No one's made anything new about Scooby Doo for ten years. And just to make this direct to DVD sequel and it literally blow up like that, like crazy. Like there's a there's a thing it, back in the late nineties, it's actually fucking crazy. Cartoon Network did this thing where they did these promos for Scooby Doo because they were like re-showing episodes and stuff and everything, up to the promotion of uh Zombie Island. And what they did was around the same time as Zombie Island, the Blair Witch Project came out. So they Really? Were, yes. <sighs> Oh, God. So they were parroting the Blair Witch Project with Scooby-Doo. Like, there were scenes of, like, you know, a camera panning around with different members of the gang. Mm. And, like, like randomly characters popping up. It ends with, like... Because, like, in the original Blair Witch Project, there's just, like... It pans to, like, a character. And they're freaking out. And then they vanish. And the camera falls. It pans to Shaggy, who's, like, the last person besides whoever's holding this camera. And then Shaggy vanishes. And then the camera falls over. This was on Cartoon Network in the late 90s. Cartoon Network's good. <laughs> it's good. It's been a thing that's like, the people that like, make shit for Cartoon Network are madmen who like, are like, yeah, I want to make a cartoon for like, five year olds, but also with disturbing imagery that can like, appeal to like, 28 year olds. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going to recommendations and ratings now. Well, you already recommended it. Oh, yeah. As did I. I did, but you know. I'm going to recommend it again, and I'm going to place this movie at a... I'm going to go 7.5. I was literally thinking the same thing. Did we plan this out? <laughs> Did we already talk about this? Did we black out some from that last episode? <laughs> we may have. That one was too weird. <laughs> <laughs> that one was too us. <laughs> weird. <laughs> but funny. <laughs> so funny. And then we'll never see the light of day. <laughs> Unless you subscribe to our Patreon. <laughs> Listener support is turned on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, guys, that's it. Thanks for listening. As always, I'm Chris. I'm Jack. And we're watching movies. Something. <laughs>